Over 100 of the top prospects are invited to showcase their athletic capabilities at the AFL Draft Combine every year. It's a crucial event where players see how their speed, agility, endurance and leaping capabilities stack up compared to the rest of their cohort. Roughly only half of those players invited will make it onto an AFL list. So for some, it's a make or break moment in their careers. But there is so much more to the combine than just the tests. Players are invited for interviews with clubs recruiting teams and coaches. They also have their heights and weights measured, their photos taken, psychological evaluations, medical testing, and of course, a whole bunch of media interviews. So how do you get invited? Firstly, the prospects are split up into two groups. There's the National Combine and the various state combines. This year, the national event was held across the MCG, Collingwood's AIA Centre and Margaret Court Arena over three days. Generally, four or five clubs must register their interest in a player to be invited to the National Combine, whereas you only need two clubs for the state call-up. This year, 65 prospects were handed national invites and flew into Melbourne on the Friday, six weeks out from the draft. A further 64 players were invited to the state combines, with the main focus of those being the athletic testing in single day events. So what does the weekend schedule look like? The highly touted Harley Reid was one of a number of players who didn't do the testing due to injury, but he broke down what the weekend really looks like. Obviously, a bit inconvenient being injured and coming back from a hive extended, a hive extended my knee last round and just kind of easing back into it. So today we, I rolled in around 11:30 us for country boys, and then um, I was straight into getting our gear and then heading in and doing our height, weight, and that, and then straight into lunch, and then had an interview straight after that, and had a bit of debriefing around what else looked like and then I had a few media things I had to do and then headed over to watch the boys go through a 2 car. so and then tea and then tomorrow's more interviews I got a few interviews tonight too and then Sunday we head in and they do the rest of their testing so I'll just watch them. The days can be long and exhausting before you even get there. Jed Walter's flight was cancelled so he had to wait around in the morning while Connor O'Sullivan was up well before sunrise. Yeah, so it's been pretty pretty full on from the get-go. So um, yeah, we were up at about quarter to five this morning, um, got on the flight um, and we got here, ended up getting here around 8.30. Interviews go all the way through until 9.30 at night, which was when we chatted to Colby McKercher. But his close friend from Tasmania, James Leake, might have had the busiest weekend of any player. Now, you're very good mates with James Like I heard he's chatting to basically every bloody club here this weekend. Um, yeah, do you want to run us through how long, I guess, you've sort of known him and a little bit about your friendship with him? Yeah, I think he's seeing away 18 clubs this week. Um, busy man. Um, he's still going now, I reckon. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been mates with Leakey for a long time. Probably not so close, um, but we've played football with each other since probably under 10, something like that. Um, played under 12 state together um, and obviously played this year allies and devils. Uh, we hang out a lot and do a lot of gym work and recovery and stuff and feel like it's good to hang out with a like-minded person who's um, reaching for the same goals and yeah he's a really humble kid and just works really hard so yeah I enjoy his company a lot. Clubs value these interviews so highly because that's when they get to understand the person that they hope to draft, not just the player. It's a great chance to understand what makes these prospects tick away from the game. Daniel Curtin is big on kiteboarding and surfing while Harley Reid and Connor O'Sullivan absolutely love being out on the water. Yeah, from away from footy, I really like to um, get out on the boat. So I usually head around uh, the uh, Ranger Basin, so it's around Rushworth and then the Murray River with a few, few of my mates and get out there and just relax, really. Yeah, nice. Actually, we were chatting to Connor O'Sullivan before. He's, he's big on that sort of stuff as yeah. well. Loves the jet ski, yeah. loves the, yeah. um, the, the sea biscuit as well. You do yeah. that sort of stuff? <laughs> nah, not no, not the biscuit. That's not me. I'm more of a wakeboarder, but yeah. In my spare time, um, sort of love to get out on the water, um, do jet skiing, a um, bit, of, bit, of, bit of the boat stuff. Um, yeah, if not that, camping, anything. Um, yeah, we like to say anything, uh, yes to anything in our household, so yeah. O'Sullivan is also a talented basketball player and he went over to the United States last year for hoops. When he returned, he spent a week training with the Giants through the AFL Academy, where his competitiveness really stood out. 
Yeah, so it was a pretty quick shift um, from going away um, to America for basketball. So I sort of switched the mindset pretty quickly back into footy and being obviously competitive in a different way. So leading into that, I just sort of wanted to get as much out of it as possible. Uh, obviously, um, test myself against obviously some of the elite players in the AFL. Um, yeah, and it was an amazing experience, um, you know, getting to train um, four days out of the five um, with such a good group of um, with such a good group of boys who go at each other every session. They don't stop. So that's definitely something that I suppose you have to remain competitive in those environments. Otherwise, you're getting eaten up a little bit. So um, yeah, no, it was a really good experience, and um, it's probably the yeah the defining um, point for me where I realised that yeah I really want to do this for a living. For a lot of the other guys, it's all about spending time together. Gold Coast Academy prospects Ethan Reed, Jed Walter and Will Graham all grew up playing together at Palm Beach Corumbin from under nines. They met fellow Suns Academy prospect Jake Rogers not too long after that. Um, yeah, they're pretty good friendships because I've grown up with them throughout my whole life, but yeah, we're pretty tight as a group, so yeah, we all give each other a bit of banter, but it's <laughs> fun and not fun at times. And if there's one thing to know about these guys off the field, it's that they love getting out onto the fairways. We need a little golf dirt. Who's the biggest slicer out of the academy boys? Gonna have to say Ethan Reed. He's, he's not so good. He, he tends to play barefoot as well, so. Plays barefoot, yeah. no shoes. Yeah, no shoes. I think most of the boys go all right. There's a couple that are a bit new. Uh, Ethan Reed's one that quite questionably plays golf bare feet. Um, I've seen a few videos. Obviously, I'm not in the Gold Coast down Tasmania, but. Yeah, a bit strange, um, not sure about it. Being one with nature, I think he is. For players that haven't fully cemented themselves in the top rungs of the draft order, the testing is vital. There are five areas where these guys can show off their skills. There's the two kilometre time trial, which was won by Tarkin O'Leary this year, with a time of five minutes and 48 seconds. Ethan Reed might be a 200 centimetre ruckman, but he wasn't far behind with a time of 5.56. Connor O'Sullivan also made it into the top 10, but his 20 metre sprint was the area he spent lots of time working on. Yeah, so I think um, just coming off the back of a lot of local footy, I only sort of finished up playing probably two weeks ago. So I have had a little bit of a, um, I suppose, interrupted um, uh, lead up or preparation for it, but definitely something that I hope to go all right in is the 2K. Um, I think definitely I'm a natural, or I'd like to consider myself a natural runner. Um, so yeah, if I can go all right in that, I'll be happy. Probably the one I've tried to work on the most has been the 20 metre. Um, yeah, it wasn't looking too good at the start of last year, but slowly trying to work away at it, um, get to that low three sort of mark. So um, yeah, it'll be something that I hope to go all right in. The speed tests are the big ones, with the winner Aidan O'Driscoll smashing out the 20 metre sprint in 2.871 seconds. This is Lance Collard, an electric small forward from Subiaco. He took out the agility test in 8.157 seconds, while Nate Caddy also impressed, finishing in the top 10. It was Nate's first time doing a testing day, and he had a point to prove to recruiters with his running. You know, we did the 2K today, so you just gotta, just gotta give it your all, I guess, and I didn't really know what I was gonna get. Um, I, was pretty, I was pretty happy with my time, got a 6.35, so, um, yeah, you know, just just got to just got to go in with you know an open head and you just got to just give it your all, I guess. And how do you train for two K? What do you sort of do? What was your training block, I guess, to try and uh, get better at that? Um, mine was just a lot of like repetitions um, with doing them. So uh, I, I probably did uh, end of, end of season. Um, it was probably about a month and a half ago. I reckon I did one every week. And then also in that, I was, um, you know, doing 1Ks and at a higher pace than what I wanted to get. Uh, so I was trying to get them around a three-minute pace and then a bit, bit over. But, um, yeah, just trying to yeah, just trying to build that pace. And then, you know, when you go out there, you just got to go as hard as you can. And kind of all your training goes out the window and it's just all mental by then. There are also two jumping tests. Potential draft bolter Zane Zakostelski finished first in the standing vertical jump test with a height of 80 centimetres. Finally, Darcy Wilson won the running vertical jump test. Wilson dominated the weekend, coming second in the 2K time trial, sixth in the standing jump and eighth in the agility test. Wilson just pipped Zane Dersma in the running vertical jump test, pulling off a 98 centimetre leap to Dersma's 97. 
Dersma is a terrific athlete with massive hops and it shows on the field. He broke down some of the secrets you need to understand in order to take a big mark. Yeah, um, I guess it's about Positioning, I think. Positioning on where the ball is going to end up dropping and um, watching the flow of the ball is probably the main one. Um, having that solid run up. So I think I'd like to get space on my opponent before I actually start my run up to, towards the ball towards the ball drop. So that's probably the best advice I can give is get your spacing right before you go. The Dersma family could well end up with four players at the highest level. His older brother Xavier and sister Yasmin are established in the league already while his younger brother Willem was named Vic Country's MVP in the under-16 national championships. Yeah, it was like being back at the local junior club, um, back at Corner Inlet Stingrays where we used to play together. It was, I had lots of fun. As you probably could imagine, playing with a family member is awesome because they, you just know where they're going to be and they'll, they'll kick you the ball if they're nice enough. So, yeah, so it was, it was, I had a lot of fun playing with him, so it was great. Zane isn't the only one with family connections in the league. Nate Caddy is the nephew of Josh Caddy, who played at the Suns, Tigers and Cats. Nate has absorbed some of that professionalism from observing Josh. He spends three nights per week reviewing film, sometimes with his coach Anthony Rocker. And he's excellent at breaking down his best skill, contested marking. Yeah, games in Bendigo, um, yeah, balls come in, but I've realised that it was a bit over my head and there's a player on my ass. <laughs> Oh, Didn't mean to go that's back, okay. But, no, 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 no. That's uh, staying in. <laughs> nah, um, and I've, so I've, I've, what I've tried to do is I've identified the drop spot of where the ball is going to go and um, protected the space in front of me so I don't overrun it. And then um, caught him off guard also because he's running. And as I'm, um, you know, as the ball's coming down, I've jumped up before he had the reaction time. And yeah, that's that's that mark there. Yeah. yeah. When asked about what their favourite memory of their footy journeys has been so far, a few of the answers were grand finals or the friends they've made along the way. But Caddy's answer was unequivocal. It's all about one of the greatest squads ever assembled. Yeah, no, I'd say under 12's big thing was probably the funnest, the funnest um, week of my life for sure. It was like we, we were there's probably 12 of us who are still, um, you know, pretty chance to get. Um, really? Who, who was in there? Uh, Harley was. Harley Reid was in there. Watto, uh, Darcy Wilson, George Stevens, um, Zane Dersman was in there. Uh, Christian Ferronado is a big chance. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, I forget now. There's a, there's a lot of them. I, I, I can't remember every of them. Anyone I forgot? Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, it was good fun. Um, we were up in Darwin um, for a week and yeah, there was a lot of uh, names in there. I can't remember off by, like George Stevens, um, Harley, me, Zane Dersma and Nate, obviously. Um, there's a few others. Sorry if I'm forgetting you. Yeah, um, <laughs> no, nah, there's a few others and yeah, it was good fun. Like it was, it was different up in Darwin. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a different environment, but it was good. It was good to experience that and play in like 36 degree heat, which was pretty cooked, but um, yeah. no, nah, it was good fun. A lot of the club interviews are very similar, but some clubs will do things a little differently. Ethan Reid enjoyed meeting Alistair Clarkson and the Roos. Colby McKercher said Sam Mitchell enjoyed a laugh. But when it came to weird questions, there was no doubt who was the winner. A club asks to like, so far, your footy journey, do it, like, talk about it in a book. Yeah. And tell us like, the heading of each chapter. Yeah, we were speaking about it before Gold Coast. Um, they ask you to do chapters of your life, like from when you were born, and I just, just had no clue what to say. And they've, they've, they've asked a lot of people that, so yeah. a lot of people have had the same answer to me. There hasn't been too many weird questions today, but there's been a few in the room. Um, I know Western Bulldogs had like 12 or something, so there's been a fair few. Um, nah, but they've been pretty cruisy. There's a few serious questions. Um, I know Western Bulldogs also asked, like, we had to, had to talk um, about no, no, nothing about footy for uh, like as long as possible and struggled a bit, so. Yeah, okay. And uh, let's run through, I guess, your last half of the season. So you've uh, I've got the moon boot on at the moment. Run us through what happened. Yeah, so I just got in the moon boot. Um, but yeah, it happened. Well, I had an MRI early, like early January this year. Um, same injury and obviously never really healed. So I did it again. Um, changing direction in the grand final. What, what is the injury? Um, it's a ligament and bone stress. So it's nothing too serious, which is good. I thought it was a bit worse because after the grand final, it flared up real big time. So, um, nah, it's nothing too bad. But um, yeah, I'll get into rehab in a couple of weeks and get back to it. Watto wasn't the only prospect not to do the testing. 
Daniel Curtin had a hamstring issue, Riley Sanders had a glute concern, Colby McKercher battled an ankle injury, while Jed Walter and Harley Reid are on their way back from knee issues. So obviously, uh, as you mentioned, your knee. Um, so do you want to run us through how your rehab sort of like looked like? I think like just sort of what sort of exercise you've been doing to sort of yeah. get the strength and stuff back. How's that going? Yeah, um, no, it's been good. Like it's feeling a lot better now. I just didn't really want to get straight back into it. Um, yeah, so I've taken up cycling the last cup, last month. Yeah. So yeah, and then I've just kind of been doing workouts to strengthen all around it really and get it back to how it was. But yeah, it's nothing, nothing too bad. All right. So let's go away from that a little bit, but more back to the gym stuff. I think uh, I'm trying to get everyone to sort of teach, pass down a little bit of their craft. And obviously everyone knows you look the, the EFO, the fendal. <laughs> Can you run us through what part of hand, your hand do you use for a really good fend off? Is it all fingertips? Does it come from the palm? Where does all the strength come from? The forearm. The forearm, yeah, right. But it's right. just straight on the hand. Yeah. So yeah, um, yep. yeah, you gotta, you gotta go with the palm. Yep. You can't be extra, you can't be out. You gotta have like that so you got that all right got that leverage to push off so yeah. if you're in the gym what are you sort of doing are you doing like these ones with the, yeah, the with bar? Well, a lot of those yeah ones. nah i'm more the the um the medicine ball yeah like this and yeah. then you're coming through like that like side on yeah then you do both sides yeah. but yeah these guys are all close friends but on field it's another story is there any sort of matchup this year that you had circled like down on your calendar any one of your mates that you really wanted to perform really well against maybe in, in the champs or something um, oh, it's always good when, when I'm running around. I see Watto just like running around, but I always try to get into him, yep. little, little kid. Um, there was a few, round one against Sandy versus good mates Archie Roberts and all them. Um, it's a bit of hype talk about that. Um, and also playing um, Harrowbury Caulfield in that grand final. Um, we always sort of knew at the start of the year we were going to be the best two teams in it. Um, and yeah, I circled that in pretty early and obviously Harley would probably want me mentioning him in this. Um, yeah, I love playing against him. I played him with him when I was like um, 12 years old. So have a bit of crap talk out there. Who's been the toughest player you've had to go up against and why? I definitely think Jed Walter um, for the first game of champs, especially because it was hyped up quite a bit. Haven't really had that um, with senior footy because there's a lot of media for the champs, obviously. But yeah, no, it was a um, really good matchup. Uh, really enjoyed it and would definitely um, want that again. Maybe that WA game, as Curtin mentioned earlier. Um, I mean, there was a bit of talk about our matchup early. Um, and then also against Vic Metro, Ollie Murphy. I mean, both Dan Curtin and Ollie Murphy are great defenders. So um, I think it was a pretty even battle for both games. So, I mean, they're both good players and they're probably the main two that stick out for this year, yeah. Jed was named a back-to-back -back under 18 All-Australian. A phenomenal achievement for a key forward but it's even more impressive considering the issue he's been battling. Yeah, so I injured my PCL um, early on in the Allies. I mean, played through it and I wanted to play as many games as I could and try to back up what I did last year. So I thought if I got through that, then after the Allies, I'm, obviously I'd have some time off. So yeah, got through that, um, then got back into um, through training, um, been doing some rehab stuff and my knee's good now. So yeah, just starting to get back into it, but yeah. Okay, I've got some uh, footage of you training here. If you just want to go through it, there's there's four videos there. If you just want to click play, narrate them and swap through, run us through what you're doing on, on each of them. Uh, so this first one here is just um, sprint um, at the start. We do 20s, 40s and 60s just to build your speed into a game, when, uh, into your training session, sorry, when you're warming up. Second one's the same, uh, just more, this is more tempo running, so we do I don't know, quite a few sets of these, so it gets a bit hard, um, but it's kind of to build the tank a little bit. Um, we do it with a couple of the other boys. So um, yeah, that's more to base to build the tank. Um, this one here, it's a funny one. It's like, it's more agility. Um, so you're facing your partner and they've got to um, mirror your moves. So whatever they're doing, you got to do. And then once the whistle blows, you both got to run to the end. So it's, it's more to be locked on and watching each step. Um, and yeah, just you can go, your partner that's um, dictating, you can go both ways. So, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And we, uh, we get into the, the glute bridge as well. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the hip thrust. So, yeah, this is this shifting is, a bit of tin there. Uh, so, yeah, this is in the gym. Oh, I reckon I can work on my form a little bit here uh, as the weight gets heavy. <laughs> but, um, nah, just um, this is just your power stuff in the gym. I mean, building your lower body strength. So, I mean, by the time you come into the game, you, you, you got that lower body strength and you can shrug tackles or drive your legs through the contest. So Jed's academy teammate, Ethan Reed has been putting in the work too. 
with a massive emphasis coming in his contested marking. Um, playing against bigger bodies, you get used to it. Uh, you get knocked down sometimes, but I feel like just I've been practicing it just at small steps coming into it. It's just my um, rhythm going into the mark, and I've been practicing that. So. Okay. Yep. Have you worked with anyone on it in particular, like any sort of craft stuff that you can short, sort of share with us? Yeah, so I've been working with the under-18 Suns coach, Jared Cotton. He's been working with me closely after every training session, before training session, even when he doesn't want to do it, so yeah. Yeah, what sort of things do you guys do? Is he just kicking it straight up in the air for you? Like, what's yeah. what's the go? So it's like a bit of running BJ, coming around and then taking the mark, just getting your feet set, small steps, and then coming up, highest point. Dan Curtin has been lauded for his ability to play anywhere, but it's not just about talent and skills. It's got a lot to do with mentality. Sometimes it might even, even be in-game where I get switched uh, positions, but I mean, back line, just kind of think about watching the ball, watching play unfold, um, whether it's playing back shoulder, the ball's higher up the ground, pushing up, um, being really aggressive with my positioning, or midfield, especially in the Colts competition, I'm a bigger body, so I um, really like to get physical, uh, get in as a hard ball. And then, um, yeah, just use my run, which I think a lot of people underestimate considering my size, but yeah. On the other side of the mental game is getting inside an opponent's head. Connor O'Sullivan is a master of that after taking a leaf out of Mason Cox's book. Now, can you run us through who's, on the, who's taking the kick at the moment, where you are? Yeah, so we've got Darcy Wilson here lining up from a shot. Um, I'm obviously on the mark and yeah, being two Bushies boys, I, I know a little bit about him. So um, yeah, I certainly didn't mind um, giving him a little bit and obviously missed it, which was, um, yeah, pretty good. So um, fed him a little bit about, um, just about his confidence at goal kicking when we're at training and hope that carried through to the game, which um, I was lucky enough that, I don't know whether I got in his head or not, maybe it just wasn't the best kick, but um, yeah, a little bit of trash talk between uh, obviously two um, players that have spent a lot of time playing together this year. Last thing, what's the key to being a really good trash talker? You don't have to swear, don't have to do anything personal. How do you get into someone's head like that? No, I think it's a, I actually, especially when you're on the mark, I've developed a little bit of the Mason Cox style where you start down low and you get, you jump up late. But no, I think the art is definitely knowing when to do it and when to not. Sometimes the best way to trash talk is to not say anything at all. Um, yeah, let the other player's mind um, sort of wander on themselves. So. No, nah, it's definitely a bit of a balance between silence is the best killer and um, also sometimes giving a little bit of trash back. So, um, yeah, it's still an art I'm trying to refine, but I'm getting there. Some guys are impervious to the trash talk. Nick Watson puts up with a lot of it and he always delivers in clutch moments. And there's not too many better examples of that than this ridiculous torpedo he launched after the siren. Oh, stop it! <laughs> One area I reckon you've got down pat pretty well is the tour. <laughs> Run us through this little one. And afterwards, I want you to grab the footy yourself and show everyone how exactly you I haven't you. watched this in a while, <laughs> actually, so it's good watching it again. <laughs> yeah, so running in now, I just having a shot. I didn't know like I was going to get close and you end up bearing a goalpost height, so. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, nah, it yeah, it was that. As soon as I got onto it, I just knew it was going straight in. I just felt the connection and, um, yeah, nah, it was probably one of the best kicks I've ever done. Yeah, hand us that mic. I want you to uh, put that footy up towards that camera there and just show us exactly your hand position for a torp and where exactly you want to hit it with a kick. So with a torp, I normally hold one on the side here um, and one under, under the bottom and, like, just hold it in that sort of a angle. Um, and just get best connection you can. Normally, I, um, I don't get as good connection because I'm not very good at them. That one was a bit of a fluke, but um, nah, it's just, it's felt, yeah, it was a bit of a fluke, but that's the, that's the way I hold it and locked it around the middle part. Hopefully get a good connection. Tasmanian pair Riley Sanders and Colby McKercher have kicked some of the wildest goals of the year. But how on earth did they pull them off? Eyes up the goals, Walter is there, it's gonna go all the way! Riley Sanders, magnificent! Um, yeah, so against WA, um, I'm sweeping here at the back of the stoppage, so just pushing my opponent in. Got the ball, uh, seen Jakey Rogers, but seen a bit of space to go through, so did a little over the head type of thing. I'm not really sure what that is, and then tried to burst through. I'm not the quickest, so it was good that Caden gave me a block. Um, and then I kind of looked up and there was nothing really coming at me. So I'm like, oh, I'll just have a ping now, like we're up by a fair bit. Um, yeah, and was lucky enough to hit it pretty well and big jetter to spoil it through. So um, no, it was definitely a good highlight. 
Um, yeah, was, that was probably a really good game for all of us, I think, in our lives. Like, we kind of asserted our dominance that we're here to kind of, we we're, were for real. So we obviously bet SA the week before by a little bit, but then once we bet um, WA by about 90 points, it kind of, everyone knew we were, you know, probably the favourites then, which was good, yeah. Yeah, incredible. And I tell you what, on socials, everyone was going, oh, man, goal was great, but how about the block from Cleary? Yeah, that was a yeah. massive, massive hip yeah. shoulder. No, it was great. Yeah, I was loving it because I, I kind of seen him and I was going to handball to him, but then he was kind of like facing the wrong way. So very unselfish of him to uh, set a block for me and allow me to keep the goal. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Sando's goal was unreal, but how about Colby's? So I evade the first defender over the top, don't know what I'm doing. Stiff arm away, take a bounce, just arch past that defender and then steady myself from 50 and launch. Um, probably should have been touching line. It wasn't it wasn't a very far kick, but um, yeah, full full tilt. So I'll give myself that one. Um, yeah, not bad. So I reckon a lot of junior players, you know, even if they are quick, they might you know sort of be able to do that. But it's always that last ten percent. It's actually getting that kick on sort of balance. Is there any sort of secrets to that? And if there's not, and you're just yeeting it, then absolutely that's fine. But yeah, run us through it. Yeah, I think you got to take a couple steps to somewhat compose yourself. Like you're running at full speed, and you're not going to be able to um, pull out a kick straight away so you need to take a few steps to steady yourself so hopefully you've created enough of a enough of a gap um, and then once you're steadied and eyes are on the target you just yeah launch and that one I didn't quite get all of it but um yeah it was good enough for a goal. The prospects might have been perplexed by Gold Coast's question about your life in a book but there's no doubt that Combine Weekend is a significant chapter in these stories about making it to the league. If you want to spend more time with these guys Check out what the AFL Academy is really like down here or head to afl.com.au to follow their journeys.